Rachel, and today I want to do a quick review of the four books in the Small Spaces Quartet. So this series is by Katherine Arden, and this starts with Small Spaces. And I'll give you a little bit of background about this, but I don't want to give you too much to ruin anything in the future. But essentially in this first book, we are starting out following a girl named Ollie who has just recently lost her mother. She's having a really hard time with that grief, and she ends up wearing the watch that her mother was wearing when she died. It's all broken and busted, doesn't work, but that doesn't matter. It still matters to her. And she's just really struggling. But in this twisted way, she ends up with in possession of this book called Small Spaces. And she's reading it. It's about these two brothers a long time ago, kind of, it sounds like from the area, and some weird things that happened to them. And as the action in uh, her book kind of creaks up, so does the action in our book following Ollie. Um, she ends up on a school bus in the middle of a cornfield because they're going on a field trip to a local farm and things get pretty weird at the farm and then when she finally makes it back on the bus she's ready to dive back into this book and then things really get weird and I will tell you that our main character Ollie does end up teaming up with two of her classmates and that trio becomes the main friend group that we follow throughout the series they're also interacting with a very creepy villain named the smiling man in all of these books and again, we're introduced to the Smiling Man and our main characters in small spaces in the fall season because as you can see, scarecrows, creepy scarecrows, cornfields, school bus, they're back to school, etc. Then we follow the three friend group into the winter season with dead voices. In this one, the three friends are with their parents at a ski lodge and they get kind of snowed in and more creepiness and spookiness ensues while they're locked in the lodge. And then in the spring, they go on a boating adventure with their parents looking for the Loch Ness monster of Lake Champlain called Champ. And they find a lot more than they bargained for. And then concluding in the summer months, we have Empty Smiles. And this one takes place at a carnival. And you can see the creepy clowns here. Whew, so creepy. So this was the last one that I read. And I actually reread the whole series so that I could read the last one and have it all fresh in my mind. And I will just say that I really enjoy this series. I recommend it all the time. And now that it's finished, I have to say I just really want more. I think the finale, I think our last book here, Empty Smiles, did a fairly good job of feeling like it wrapped up our story arc for the our main three characters who ends up kind of being a uh, a quad group by the end but I still feel like I want more I want to hear what happens to these kids if anything is unresolved and uh this book we get the most information about the villain named the smiling man but I would really like like a spinoff about him or maybe with another group of kids or something. I just want more information about this creepy villain. And I feel like we were just given like enough to really make us want even more in this book. But it does kind of wrap up the arc of the three main characters. So it does feel like there's definitely an ending, even though it leaves you wanting more because you just want to know more about all these characters. Uh, my only complaint, especially about this one, is that it felt like it did wrap up really fast. I mean, there's four books here. We're all invested in this and it felt like everything wrapped up in about 10 pages, which seemed a little fast. But beyond that, I think it was really good. Uh, let's go through the books a little bit and I'll give you a little bit more detail. So for Smiling Spaces, the first book in the series, this is the one that takes place in the fall. Uh, and one of the things that I absolutely love about the series is that one takes place each uh, season. It really feels like you're experiencing a whole year with these kids because you're going through the seasons and everything in the book just really goes back to the season. So I think it's just fantastic. So this one's set in the fall and we are, we're getting like back to school vibes, uh, cornfield, scarecrow, farming. We're getting all those cozy fall vibes and I'd probably give this one a three and a half out of five stars rating wise. And I would probably give it a three out of five spooky wise, especially from the, the mindset of a middle grade horror novel. The second book takes place in the winter and that's Dead Voices. Again, this one really brings you into the winter vibes. They're heading out on this ski trip uh, to the ski lodge and then they get snowed in. It's freezing. The heat's gone out. They're all huddled together and it's just so 
cold and wintry and you can almost like hear the wind blowing so atmospheric um, I would say this is probably my favorite one I would give this one probably four four and a half out of five stars I just really enjoyed reading it I liked a lot of the elements I love when people in books are stuck in like cold places they're like snowed in I love it so this was definitely my favorite one I would say surprisingly though I don't think it was the scariest one I would say this maybe had like a three ish out of five on the scary scale. Then next up in the spring, like I said, we were out on the lake. We were doing a little boating trip. It was warm enough to sit outside, but it gets really cold in the evenings if you got trapped somewhere, for instance. With this one, even though I very much enjoyed it, I would say of the four, it's probably my least favorite, but it is very creepy. Um, there's an, an element of supernatural with all of this for the horror element to work, but, and I would say if this one was a little bit more realistic, I, it would probably be the scariest. But for now, I'm going to say it's probably uh, a three and a half, three-ish out of five. This one was probably a three out of five for me star-wise, but it was probably a four out of five spooky-wise. Uh, and then finally, we have our empty smiles. This one is set in the summer. We've got carnival vibes going on. We've got outside swimming going on, kids out riding their bikes, etc. Nice summer stuff. Nice summer stuff going on with, you know, creepy stuff as well. And as you can see, there's clowns in this girl. <laughs> These clouds were terrifying. Uh, enjoyment wise, I would say I gave this one probably a four out of five. I would say that this one, the issues I had with it definitely came at the end because it wrapped up so quickly. It seemed like a little too convenient when it came together. And I just kind of wanted more about the smiling man, um, which technically isn't this book's fault, but that's where it lies. So I would say probably a four out of five spooky factor. I would say a four out of five. Uh, I have never been scared of clowns before, but this one kind of gave me the creeps and I will be weary of clowns from now on and I will always have my eyes on them. <laughs> so there you have it, my ratings for the Small Spaces series. Overall, I think this is a fantastic middle grade spooky series. If you're interested at all, definitely give them a read. Start with Small Spaces. They're all by Katherine Arden highly recommend. And let's hope that this is not actually the last book in this world that we'll see, because I would love to see more of these kids. And if not these kids, at least the villain, the smiling man, I want more. This book really gave us uh, a lot more insight into him than the other books. And now I'm just hungry for even more. <laughs> so thank you, Catherine Arden for such an amazing series. Y'all, if you haven't read it, definitely go do so. And let me know how much you love it down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again in another video soon. Bye for now.